Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice equation from a book called Non-Routine Problems in Algebra, Geometry, and Trigonometry. I'm thinking about uh, doing a quick book review on this book. It's a really nice book uh, that I got a hold of a while ago. And one of the authors is last name is Bryant. So if you wanted to look it up, I'm also going to share some links down below. All right, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. I modified the problems a little bit. It was actually a system of equations, but unfortunately, for some reason, people do not like systems. Uh, when you compare them to single polynomial equations, they're more uh, popular. That's what I noticed. That's why I wanted to kind of modify the problem a little bit. And I think it also looks nice in this form. So we have x plus 2 to the fifth equals x to the fifth plus 242. The original problem statement was something uh, different with two variables, and you could probably figure it out. Uh, it's like, it was kind of like y to the fifth minus x to the fifth equals 242, and y minus x is equal to 2, something like that. Okay, so we kind of have like a two numbers uh, that differ by 2. And of course, uh, when you see a problem like this, you shouldn't be thinking, oh, it's quintic, we can't solve it, right? There's no quintic formula, unfortunately. It's impossible to solve quintics in the general case, even though there's a class of solvable quintics. I haven't found much about them. I've, I've been searching uh, for a good, I don't know, if you know of any good sources, please let us know uh, in the comment section. Anyways, so when you expand it, this is not going to be quartic because x to the fifth is going to cancel out. And when you do that, you're going to get something like this. Okay, Where does the 10 x to the fourth come from? If you think about the binomial theorem, you're going to expand it and you're going to get something like this. Obviously, we can divide everything by 10 and get something that looks a little nicer, just a tiny bit, right? It's still a quartic, but it's just going to look a little nicer. Something like this. Now, you can definitely try a couple different things here, such as rational root theorem. If there are any rational solutions, then they should divide the constant term because the, this is a monic polynomial. Normally, it's a little different, but if you look up rational root theorem, you're going to find more information on it. Anyways, we could definitely try that. Uh, for example, what are some factors of negative 21? And by the way, plus minus doesn't matter here because we're going to consider all the cases. But you can think about plus minus 1, plus minus 3, plus minus 7, and plus minus 21. So th there, there are eight candidates, and you can kind of test it out, either by long division, polynomial division, or just by substitution. You can find out if uh, these are possible solutions. If you find one, then you can definitely divide by that, and maybe you're going to find two, and you're going to end up with uh, two quadratics. Okay? So that's... A lot of work but it can be done if again there are rational solutions if there are no rational solutions this is method is not going to work another idea could be uh, you could you know depress the cortic and then kind of put pretty much everything on the right hand side except for the x to the fourth and then you can add something to both sides to make it a perfect square and there's a couple different ways you can solve cortics uh, which we've done before all right and if you wanted to look up uh, some comments, um, I think it was Nadia Fan uh, that kind of provided uh, lots of interesting insights into the solution of uh, quartic equations. And a bunch of other viewers, of course, but I can't remember all the names, but I know one name definitely stands out. Anyway, so let's see how we can solve this problem in a different way, because this is kind of like you know, pretty trivial, I, I mean, pretty standard. But let's go ahead and take a look at a non-standard approach, somewhat non-standard. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that equation one more time. Our equation is x plus 2 to the fifth equals x to the fifth plus 242, right? Great. So first, I want to put all the x's on the same side. Again, I'm not going to use the binomial theorem here. So I don't worry about, uh, you know, because we already have that, right? So here's what I'm going to do, though. x plus 2 to the fifth minus x to the fifth equals 242. And again, if you call this y, you can turn this into a system of equations. By the way, that could be a separate method, a totally different method, because y minus x is equal to 2, obviously, and y to the fifth minus x to the fifth. I think the, the original problem was like that in the book. Or x and y were switched around, doesn't matter. 
uh, and you could solve it. Obviously, y to the fifth minus x to the fifth is factorable. If you divide it by y minus x, you're going to get another quartic, and then it's going to be a homogeneous equation, so on and so forth. But let's just not do that and do this a different way. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a special substitution. Instead of using y equals x plus 2, I want to use something else so that I can definitely simplify, uh, simplify, simplify this a great deal, okay? So here's how it works. Now think about two numbers uh, that differ by 2. Can I write them like this? Maybe use y minus 1 for x, and then this would be y plus 1. You see the idea? Okay, now we have the following. If I call x y minus 1, then I'm getting y plus 1 to the fifth minus y minus 1 to the fifth equals 242. Now, when we expand these and subtract, let's see what happens. That's going to be pretty interesting. So, and if you have expand the first one, the second one is alternating, so that would be pretty easy. But think about, uh, I think it was 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, right? That's the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. And then you're going to get y to the fifth plus y to the 5y to the 4th. By the way, so the second term is b. Uh, b is 1, so you don't have to worry about it. Plus 10y to the 3rd, plus 10y squared. Notice the symmetry, 5y and 1. And then the other term, uh, we're going to have to subtract it, so let's go ahead and write it first, and then we can kind of negate and add. In other words, add the opposite. Right? Okay. So that's going to be my next term, and we're going to go ahead and subtract it. So let's go ahead and change the sign here. Minus, plus, minus, plus, plus. Oops, I probably messed up because it shouldn't be like that. Okay, anyways, let me just do it right away because the signs will alternate anyways. So I might as well just uh, write the opposite of y minus 1 to the 5th power. That's going to be negative y to the 5th plus y to the 4th minus 10y cubed plus 10y squared minus 5y plus 1. And then, of course, then we're going to add these, right? When you add these two things, you should be getting 242 at the end, right? These two are going to cancel out. These two are going to cancel out. These two are going to cancel out. All the odd terms are canceling out. We get 10y to the fourth plus 20y squared plus 2 equals 242. We can definitely divide both sides by 2 and get something slightly simpler. And that is going to be 2, 121. I don't know why I didn't uh, subtract the 242 first. I don't know, but we can do that now. 5y to the fourth plus 10y squared minus 120 is equal to 0. Uh-oh, that's nice. We can divide everything by 5. Super duper. y to the fourth plus 2y squared minus 24 equals 0. So I kind of need to factor negative 24. This is factorable. Notice that. I can kind of think of two numbers whose product is negative 24 and whose sum is 2. Those numbers are 6 and negative 4. Notice that 6 has to be the opposite. I mean, the bigger one, uh, the, up, the positive one needs to be bigger to get a positive sum. So from here, we get y squared plus 6 times y squared minus 4. Just pretend y squared is another variable like z. And then from here, we get four solutions, right? If y squared plus 6 is 0, this gives us y squared equals negative 6. And from here, as you know, we get y equals root 6i and negative root 6i. And if y squared minus 4 is equal to 0, from here we get y squared equals 4, and that gives us y equals 2 and y equals negative 2. Y, y. Okay, great. So we got four y values, but y is not the end goal. Y is what? Y is... I forgot. I don't know what y is. I know that x is y minus 1. Okay, let's write it down. x is y minus 1, which means I'm going to subtract 1 from each of these solutions to get x. That's what matters, right? I don't really care what y is in terms of x because I care about x. So we're going to go ahead and add negative 1 to each of these. So our solutions are going to be like negative 1 plus minus root 6i. And then the other ones are going to be like if you add negative 1, this is going to be 1. And this one is going to be a negative 3. So it looks like these are solutions. Uh-oh, how did I miss the 1? I mean, it should <laughs> be kind of obvious, right? When you look at an equation like this. Okay, let's check it out. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. 20 plus 1 is 21. Oh, I should have known that. That's what I always say that, but I didn't practice what I preached. Sorry about that. Uh, normally, you should check 
if the sum of the coefficients is zero, then x equals one is a solution. In this case, it is. I just missed that, but it just came up here. So those are going to be the solutions of this quartic, not quintic equation. Let's go ahead and see if we have a graph for this. I don't think I made a graph of it. Oh, I did. Great. Awesome. Great. So there are two solutions thanks to Wolfram Alpha. You can see the real solutions here. One of them is uh, one and the other one is negative three. As you can see, of course, complex solutions, you can't see them. But very nice because what is uh, one thing that I really like about the graphs from Wolfram Alpha as opposed to Desmos is that uh, Wolfram Alpha will do the appropriate scale. I mean, you can do it with Desmos too. I know I can, I can change the scaling, but that's just more work and I'm lazy. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.